Are we live? Is it a Tuesday at 2 p.m. right here on the ROM Toronto Instagram account? Hello, everyone. It's your favorite ROM Kids camp director. It's me, it's Kieran, coming at you from a backyard. Same location as last week, but still very much the backyard. Uh, long time viewers know that we are in the process of moving, and right now we're living in the basement. Uh, but very excited to be here. Also, this is our second episode live ever uh, with a live studio audience right there in the back. Let's give a little shout out to them. What's going on to our friends? Julian Remy. Hi, friends. Hello. Nice. Look at that. What a live audience does to a production is wonderful. We're really excited to be here with you today. Uh, last week, we spoke all about the water cycle. The week before that, we had Julie Tomei on talking about light and rainbows and color and all of those amazing things. Uh, this week, we have Dr. Santiago Claremont on the show. He's an ornithologist and curator at the Royal Ontario Museum. And we're talking all about birds, uh, their evolution, and how different wings do different things. Next week on the show, um, we have Craig on to talk about archaeology, the Archaeology 101, if you will. We're really excited about that. And then the week after that, on our season finale of the Rom Kids show, we have Burton Lim on, mammologist at the Royal Ontario Museum. Uh, and we're going to talk all about our upcoming blue whale exhibit with if everything goes well and we continue to wear a mask and do all those good things. Uh, we can maybe see at the end of July. So really, really excited about that. Um, with that said, hi everyone to your virtual classrooms and your classrooms. What's going on, friends? Uh, hi to everyone in your kitchens and in backyards like we are here. Uh, and hi to everyone on YouTube. Let us know if you're in the audience. We're really excited to talk to you about birds today. And with that, I think it's time to do... Uh, oh yeah, and you know what? If you know the Rom Kids Show theme song, Sing along with us. I think that would be a lot of fun. Here we go. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show with me. We'll do some crafts and tell some stories. Let's talk about science, art, and history. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show starring you and me. Nice! Way to go! I like that. That's the ROM, uh, that's the theme song portion of the event. Thank you so much. All right, today we're talking about uh, bird evolution. We're talking about flight. We are making these awesome, awesome, awesome rocking birds. My first favorite bird is a loon. And so that's what we got a loon right here. Whoa, there's a bug. Uh, and then my second favorite bird is a cassowary. Um, so we're gonna talk about those. So. Um, I want you to, to be aware of that. And you know what? I feel ready to introduce um, our special guest today. Let's do that. Let's turn on the lights. Whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> That's our executive producer. Where are you, Santiago? Where are you, buddy? Oh, I think he got knocked off. That's okay. Let's just hold on here for a little bit. And I'm gonna introduce you to what we're doing, and then when Santiago comes back in, uh, we'll be able to start the show. Um, maybe in a Teams chat, we could just see how he's doing. There. Um, with that, uh, we're making these flying birds while we reconnect uh, with Dr. Santiago Claremont, who's our ornithologist special guest today. What do you need to make your rocking birds? You need cardstock. So grab, you know, a nice white piece of cardstock right there. I've already cut mine out, but get a normal size. Maybe get a bowl to trace your circle with. A bowl is really useful for tracing. Try that out. And then you're going to need some markers. All right. I also got, uh, I got some black Sharpies here, but you can also use crayons. If you're ambitious and you want to use paint, you can use paint too. follow your heart. You're going to need some scissors right just like that uh, and you're going to need some glue these are all things that you're going to need to make your project and i'm just going to give your first i'm checking in oh santiago you're there hey buddy yeah. hello everyone nice everyone welcome to the show we got dr santiago claremont here with us today to talk all about birds we've already done the first step 
Um, so let's dive right in. We got an expert here. So if you have questions about birds, about flight, how birds do their thing, then drop those questions in the chat. Um, you know, we've had a lot of paleontologists on the show and we've talked a lot about birds and dinosaurs, but I've always wanted to ask this question to an ornithologist, you know, someone on the front end of this. There is a connection between dinosaurs and birds. Can you describe what that connection is? Yeah, the, the connection is that birds evolved from dinosaurs. So that's a, that's the reason we say that they are dinosaurs. But that, that's a connection. They are more than more than sister sister animals. They are connected by descent. I love that connected by descent. So whenever you have like chicken tendies or you have a chicken burger or something like that, know you are eating a dinosaur. If in your household turkey is a big part of like holidays or big get-togethers, you are eating a dinosaur. And I'm so excited to just hear that Thank straight you. up from uh, an ornithologist. And another thing I want you to take away here is all birds are dinosaurs, but not all dinosaurs are birds, okay? That's, a, that's another big, big takeaway there. Um, S Santiago, what was the first bird? Do we even know? Ooh, that's a difficult question. Uh, traditionally, we consider uh, Archaeopteryx as the first bird this was uh, an animal, a fossil found um, many years ago, and it's 150 million years old. And the skeleton is like a dinosaur, but then you can see the feathers and the wings, uh, very like any modern, uh, any modern bird. Uh, right now, what happened is that there are many other fossils that are very similar. I like that. I like that. Uh, the Archaeopteryx is an incredible find because you can even see like the little feathers in their wings and things like that. Okay, next step of your project. Now that you have your circle, I want you to fold it right in half. All right, is my rocking bird still there? That's what we're making. Fold it right in half. Now I'm going to show you something that I learned while I was doing the demo. And if like you're a teacher, you know you always got to do the project first before you do it with your kids. And what I learned is that if you cut on an angle around your, your, the outside, um, the edge of your circle, you can get it to your circle to be a little bit more graceful, right? And it makes your bird seem a little bit more graceful because birds are quite graceful animals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna cut around the edge, cut a piece off to make it a little bit thinner here so that it's a little bit wider on the top. Um, okay. So big question, Santiago, that we all want to know, how did wings evolve? Oh no, what happened to our sound? Sorry, Santiago, we're having a sound issue. Try again. Oh no, what's happened with our sound? Hey, you know what? This is technical issues when you, um, when you work in a backyard. We're rebooting the sound. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, uh, the, how wings evolve? That's a very interesting question. So now we know that many dinosaurs have uh, uh, feathers on their arms. So they kind of ha had already some sort of wings, but not, uh, not functional wings. Um, what happened then is that uh, flight evolved in birds, and uh, during that process, those feather arms became uh, wings. The problem is that we don't know exactly how uh, flight evolved. I like that answer, and a really important thing about science is we're always constantly learning new uh, and more things. You know, science keeps building on each other like a puzzle or a Lego set. As we learn more, we get a clearer picture of the past. Um, so, you know, maybe in some ways, a paleontologist or someone watching right now might become a paleontologist or an ornithologist in the future and find a more direct link to learning about why and how birds uh, got that flight. 
Okay, we're gonna do the next step and then we have a lot to talk about wing Santiago. So what I want you to do now, and you can see I've made my, my outline here, is I want you to draw your bird. You can do any bird you want. Um, I made a loon and I'm gonna to attempt to make a loon again, because again, my favorite bird was these flappy wings, which will be our next step. But color in your bird however you want. I know our friend Remy is making a parrot, a very colorful, colorful bird. Um, okay, so Santiago, my next question is about wings. And how do birds fly? Like, how do they use their wings to fly? The key is that they they push air downwards and forward and uh, backwards. So they get this um, energy from the air. And the key is to move the wings very fast or to have some flow of, of air. Of air. Um, so yeah, either like a propeller or like a, a, a helicopter, that's kind of the, the, the way uh, most birds fly. I really like that, you know, it's pushing air around. And I know a lot of early planes, like people who are trying to invent ways to fly, try to use the bird model of flapping wings. Uh, that didn't really work out for us in the same way. Uh, planes work a little bit differently, but it's all about pushing that air fast. Santiago, a lot of different types of animals fly. Uh, we know a lot of insects fly, like a dragonfly, or just you know, you know your basic uh, fly itself. Uh, we know that there are ancient flying reptiles, like Quetzalcoatlus, uh, that lived along with dinosaurs, but they were reptiles that flew. Uh, we also know that bats, our mammal friends, fly. You know, do all flying animals fly the same? There are some differences, but the, the, the main principles of pushing air is, is the same for all. Uh, one of the um, variants, one, one of the other ways of flying is to hold your uh, wings fixed and uh, glide, or basically also take advantage of uh, air currents that go upwards so you can uh, soar, so increase your, your altitude uh, without moving your wings. That's another variant. But uh, yeah, basically the principles are the same for all, uh, all, uh, for all flying animals. Got it. Uh, yeah. Wings are special because feathers are, um, um, it's, a wing is not a continuous, it's not a, a whole single piece, but it's made of multiple feathers and that makes uh, some interesting and differences interesting i really like that okay we have a question from the audience um what is the average speed of a bird flying i don't even know if that's answerable do you know uh yeah it's um it's very hard to measure because you have to take into account uh, the the movement of the wing and you you have to measure the, the speed with different tools so there are not many uh, many studies out there that were able to measure uh, um, speeds. Okay. But basically, um, uh, it depends on the species. The fastest species are uh, falcons. Ducks actually are very fast. Loons are very fast too. And we're going to talk about why. Um, and there are slow species as well. Soaring birds with their broad wings are very slow. Um, I like yeah, that. Typically, faster than a human walking for sure. You need speed for flying, anyways. Uh, today, I found out. You know, I've always thought like the peregrine falcon was like you know a really fast bird, but today we found out ducks are also really fast too. And that my good friend the loon, which I just like because of its call at night on like a lake, um, is also a fast bird. I like that. Um, okay, now we have a lot to discuss about wings. Okay, we have a lot to discuss about wings because we know and we're going to learn about how different wings do different things. So the first bird that I'm going to bring up, or what's the first bird that you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the purple martin first? Sure. Okay, purple martin. Tell us about the purple martin. So purple martin is a kind of swallow, you know, small passerine that spends most of the time on the wings uh, catching insects uh, in flight. And uh, I have a specimen of a spread wing here. Go for it. These are specimens that we preserve here at the ROM. This is the wing of a purple mountain. And you can see that it's elongated and pointy. 
and is relatively big in comparison to the body of the, of the bird. So these big and elongated wings are ideal for many things, for speed, for maneuverability. Uh, uh, it results in an economic flight. They can spend most of the day flying without no problem. So that's the first, the first type I wanted to show you. So Santiago, uh, the purple martin has a large pointy wing, which allows it to not only fly fast, but also to maneuver. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yes, and uh, falcons, for example, have also this kind of wings, long and pointy. Mm, my peregrine falcon friend, I really like that. Okay, um, what is an, oh, here, I'm gonna show you another really cool pic of this purple martin right there. Such a cool bird. What do purple martins eat? Insects, flying insects, mostly. Okay, I really like that. So maybe they could help with our caterpillar problem uh, in our backyard right now. Okay, the next bird I'm really excited about is the Eastern Screech Owl. Can you tell us about that? What's it type of wing? Yeah, I have a, a wing of a Screech Owl here. So you see, it's uh, elongated, but broad as well, and it's not pointy. And this is a, also a big wing for the size of this bird. And that results in a very economic uh, flight, but it's a slow flight, these are uh, owls. Uh, fly very slow, and that allow them to fly at night, for example. If you are flying at night, it's, not, uh, it's very dangerous to fly very fast. <laughs> so they fly slowly, and that also allows them to um, maneuver inside the forest and catch insects and other small prey, like small mammals. Um, so this is the wing for a slow flyer. Long, but broad. Long, but broad. Okay, now I have some questions about this bird. Okay, friends in our audience, can you see those eyes? Like, those eyes, like they look like human eyes. They look like there's a human underneath of it wearing, so I'm just going to show you that too. Looking like it's wearing a, like a <laughs> mask. So, like... Are the, can, can owls, can this owl, can an eastern screech owl, like, see really well? Oh, yeah. You can see it uh, with very little light um, at night. They are very good at that. They also have very, uh, very sensitive hearing. They can, they can, they can detect prey by uh, using their ears alone sometimes. Mm. There you go. Two senses that work really well on owls are their eyes and their ears, okay? Because I know we talk a lot about senses. Now we have a question from the audience. Okay, Santiago, it's a little bit different than what we're talking about right now. Yeah. But Dia wants to know, why do birds fly? What? What's the question again? Dia wants to know, why do birds fly? Why? Yeah. Oh, good question. So they use, uh, they fly for many reasons. They, for example, swallows can uh, catch prey when flying, so they need to fly to catch prey, flying insects. Other birds use flight only for uh, going from one place to another, one, one feeding place to another uh, feeding place, or from the nest to a, a good habitat for finding insects. Uh, even other birds use, uh, you know, other birds walk from one, one place to another, but still they can use flight for escaping predators, which may become very important for, for, for the survival of birds. So uh, there are many species of birds that don't fly much in their lifetime, except when they are uh, attacked or they're afraid uh, and they escape predation like that. I like that. Okay, so there's lots of different reasons why uh, birds evolved flight to eat food, to get from point A to point B, and to get away uh, when a predator shows up. Okay, next bird that we want to highlight uh, today because they have another unique type of wing and different wings do different things is, um, is this one right here. Let me just get the good pick, the pick that I want, which ah, I think I lost. Oh, here we go. So this one's called what? A horned grebe? Yes, it's an aquatic bird, and uh, in particular, it's a diving bird. So they catch the, uh, their their food under the water, like loons. Mm. 
And what is particular about them is that they have this kind of wing. So you see it's a long and pointy wing, like a Falcon, like a Martin. But what happens is that it is a small wing in comparison to the to the size of the bird. I have a bird here. Uh. On the so this wing is not good enough for maneuverability. They have to fly uh, to flap uh, very fast and move very fast to, to be able to fly, actually. Mm -hmm. So at the end, they can fly very fast, but they cannot uh, make many maneuvers or, you know, even for, for taking off, they have to run over the water, like paddling over the water to gain uh, velocity, to gain uh, speed in order to, to be able to fly. But once they are flying, they can fly, they fly very fast. So they can travel long, long distances uh, in any way. That's awesome. So to get going, because they're a water bird and they spend a lot of time living on water, is as opposed to like a plane sort of pulling off of a runway, they use the water as a runway to run on and then to push exactly. off to get flight. That is, exactly. okay, newfound respect for a bird I just learned about, the horned grebe. Uh, so I really like that. They can fly really, really far. They can fly fast. Um, how would they use their wings when they dive? Do their wings work when they dive? Not in these, uh, in, in grebes, no. Um, grebes and uh, loons, they just fold their wings and use their, their feet for paddling and diving. Other species like ox and other marine birds uh, use their wings and they can they fly up the water using their wings. For example, like, like penguins, We're gonna talk which uh, the wing, because it's not used for flying, it became um, completely adapted for swimming. It's like flippers instead of, of wings. Really? But that's a reason that the wings are, are small for diving birds, is that big wings are buoyant. They will float, and that will be very cumbersome for a bird that wants to go deep in, in, into the water. That's awesome. Okay, I'm actually learning so much about birds. With that in mind, it's time for you to design your wings, okay? So I've started on my body right here. Um, with your leftover paper, I want you to consider the type of wing that your bird has or the ecosystem it lives in, or like Santiago said, for the reasons for flight. Why does it, why does it need to fly? Does it need to fly to get from point A to point B? Does it need to fly to eat? Does it need to fly to run away? Okay. Then think about, you know, is my, is my wing, uh, big and pointy so that I can maneuver around and be really speedy. If you're making up a bird, think of all of those different things that I, then what I want you to do is draw your wing on your page. Okay. On your scrap paper. And then you're going to cut that wing out and then you're going to trace it to get your other wing. Then I want you to color that all in. Again, I pre-did this, so I, I did it already in advance, uh, which is to say uh, it's already cut out. But I want you to be working on that because we have a, oh, we have another question. Um, we have a question. It's from Andrea. Um, what is the most impressive flyer? There are, there are many fantastic uh, ways of of flying and some some birds, uh, for example, the the wandering albatross can travel hundreds of kilometers without moving its wings, just using the the movement of the air over the over the, the waves. It, it's just amazing. Uh, other birds also can, uh, for example, uh, swifts can um, basically uh, some swifts can fly most of their lives. They don't even land for uh, sleeping. They can sleep on their wings flying around. Imagine um, being able to sleep while you're just walking around. Like, that's awesome. And you know what they do? They kind of uh, put to sleep half of their brain for uh, for five seconds and half of the, uh, the other half of the brain for another uh, few seconds. And that way they are maintain some consciousness, but still can sleep somehow flying. Um, those would be my, uh, the most fantastic flyers, I would say. That's so cool. Learning about that plus the bird that like uses the water to as a runway is that's fascinating stuff. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. We have another uh, Tashini. 
wants to know why do birds eat worms? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, worms are everywhere and, and they are very nutritious. So there are many birds that evolve uh, that are adapted or are, um, uh, eat worms uh, uh, if they're available. Uh, one of the most uh, abundant ones here in Toronto is the um, American robin. He, that bird specializes on uh, earthworms in particular, and is a very, very skillful hunter of earthworms. You can see them in the lawns and parks. Uh, um, uh, hearing very, um, you know, apparently they can hear the movements of the, of the worm inside their burrows. What? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Birds are really cool. I'm learning, I'm lear like, we've had a lot of bird episodes, but I'm learning in this one that birds can do fantastic, amazing things. Okay, great question. Keep sending in your questions. We have another bird that we need to talk about. Uh, it's the Northern Cardinal. Tell us about this bird. Yeah, you, you all should uh, know this one is around uh, the gardens and parks in Toronto. And it's an example of a bird that don't fly much. Um, so they have these kind of wings. So it's red and beautiful, but it's also rounded. And it's not too big. And that kind of, of wing, actually, is not very good for anything. So it's a, it's a characteristic of a bird that don't that don't need to fly much. Um, so cardinals are sedentary; they don't migrate, and they just need wings uh, for escaping predators or for moving from tree to tree here and there. But even they they feed mostly on the ground as well. Got it. Beautiful. My big takeaway from that is that birds that need to travel long distances so think about like the canada goose which migrates traditionally they need to have wings adapted for doing that type of movement which is going far 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 away the cardinal doesn't migrate it just stays where it's born it's just hanging out it's just a local kid uh staying in its local city doing its own thing so it just needs wings to really escape from predators and get to its next meal huh okay so wow wings really do different things now what i want to do here is i want to sort of advise you on your next step before i want to talk about flightless birds okay because i think those are just as cool so with your wing okay hopefully yours is done or it's in the process just you know keep this in the back of your mind what you're going to do is you're going to fold oh look chippy there's a chippy right there. there's a chipmunk we call them chippies here uh making a special guest appearance all right so take your wing, fold up the end. Okay, you see how I did that? I folded up the end. That's how you're gonna attach it to your bird. All right, that little folded up piece is what you're going to glue and then attach to your bird so that it can fly. You can see how I've done that on my finished one here. You can see how originally it was flat. I then bent it upwards so that I could uh, then attach it to the top of my bird so my rocking bird can fly, okay? So work on that, do that. Oh, we have another question from our, uh, from the group chat. It's a good question right here. What do birds use for shelter? So where do birds like sort of live? Uh, it depends on the species. Some uh, need some tree cover or among the grasses, other just perch on a branch and don't need much, much uh, shelter. Feathers are very good for, uh, you know, protecting birds from the weather and um, and even, the, you know, uh, the, the sun and the weather in general. So, yeah, I mean, although they, they do have their preferred shelters, um, it's, there are very few species that really need to, to be under cover in a cave or, or, in, um, or in a cavity, for example. Okay, this question reminded me of another question that I skipped past earlier, but I think we should address now because you said something really cool. Birds have feathers, which they can use to sort of keep them warm. How do feathers keep a bird warm? Oh, it's a great uh, insulator. So feathers create this layer of air that is trapped between the outer layer of feathers and the body of the bird. 
and that's a great way of uh, getting of, of insulate the the, the, in, the, in, the interior uh, body. Uh, that's the main trick: capturing and enclosing air between the skin and the outer layer of feathers. So this is why you should layer in the winter. Okay, maybe your parents, maybe your mom is telling you all about layering in the winter. If you layer, uh, it creates that space for air so that you can get warm. And if you look at those like puffer coats that some folks wear, again, it's all that material that traps the air. The air is then gets warm and keeps you warm. I like that. That was cool. That was cool. Okay, um, we talked about a lot of birds that fly, a lot of birds, you know, that use their wings for different things. But some birds are flightless. How come? Yeah, what happened, as I said, some, some species don't fly much for, not, not even for going from one place to another. They can walk and they can find their food on the ground. And um, in some cases, they don't even need to escape predators. For example, in some oceanic islands, there's no, no predators, no mammals that can uh, uh, um, attack birds. So in those particular circumstances, uh, some birds have lost completely their capacity to fly. And they have become flightless. Huh, I really like that. That's interesting. Okay, we're gonna unpack that a little bit more. But you see, I've folded up the edge of my wing and I'm now going, I've put glue onto it and I'm now attaching it, okay? Just right there at the top with the wing. Now. This is not like the most accurate portrayal of a loon wing as we learned today. It's, you know, big, it's long and it's pointy, but for the purpose of my art project, it works right there. Okay, um, what do birds uh, like ostriches, which is a flightless bird, is a big giant bird. It's a flightless bird. What does it use its uh, feathers for or its wings for? Now, ostriches in particular still use their feathers for uh, um, behavior, for display. Uh, in particular, for finding mates, they have a kind of a dance where they open their wings and they show, they move their wings and move their feathers. And that apparently is, um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's important for them. So they have uh, preserved their wings and their feathers uh, for aesthetics, basically. Oh, I like um, that. They also use their, their wings for creating shade for their eggs or their cheeks when, they, when the sun is, the tropical sun is uh, uh, too harsh. They use that as well. It's like a little umbrella. That's cute. I like that. Okay, the most well-known bird before we wrap up, okay, the most well-known flightless bird I think um, of is the penguin. Okay, the penguin right there. Um, what, they don't necessarily fly through the air, but how do they use their wings? Like uh, flippers, basically. So they uh, fly underwater. And um, under the water is not the same because you don't need to push water uh, downward because penguins naturally float because they have feathers, they have much air. They follow. So the trick is... Uh, Basically, they need to make sure that they go down. So they have actually heavy bones, which uh, help them um, to be heavier, and also have to uh, fly deeper, fly downward. That's awesome. Okay, so I guess my final bird-related question before we, we go to our call to action at the end of our show is a lot of penguins live in Antarctica where it's super, super, super cold. They then swim through the water, which is really wet and really cold. How do they stay like warm enough? Because they don't, they don't live in, we were talking about shelter earlier. They don't live in caves, all right? They don't make big giant burrows or anything. They're just like right out there on the ice. How do penguins stay warm? It's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just a, Feathers, feathers are, are magical. So they create this layer, of, this impermeable outer layer of, of uh, with feathers. They have a layer of air in between, and then they have the skin. And uh, beneath the skin, they also have a layer of fat that also help um, maintain temperature. 
but it's mostly because of the feathers. Yeah. Feathers Insulate. are one of nature's amazing evolutions. Okay, we have a fi one yeah. more question from our audience. Um, why do some birds follow other animals? I think, oh. I, I, think mm -hmm. I understand that. It's like, you know, in the savannah, when we have some like big animals and then you see like a bird mm -hmm. on it, what's going on? Yeah, in many cases, it's because uh, the big animals that are walking around um, move the vegetation and that creates some, uh, you know, uh, flush some, um, uh, make some insects to move. Insects that were hidden in the vegetation now are flying around. And uh, the birds take advantage of that and go after and hunt these uh, uh, insects that were uh, moved and uh, scared by the big animals. So that, that's one of the... And ticks make a tasty treat. If you are a bird that has evolved to eat ticks, like by no means do I want you to go out and get a tick pet. But some birds really <laughs> like eating ticks and ticks find their way onto animals, and especially on the big ones. Hey, you're just a bird. You can hang out on that big animal, eat some ticks, munch as you will. Um, okay, our call to action, uh, and we like to have these on our show, uh, things that we can do as a community, whether in our classroom or at home. Uh, many bird species are threatened. What can we do to help preserve and protect our bird friends? Yeah, I mean, the main recipe is to protect their habitat the places where they live and their resources. So that means um, creating protecting areas in remote places, but also making sure that our food is coming from friendly uh, farms and you know where agricultural practices are, are friendly to birds, uh, reducing the, pe the use of pesticides and things. And uh, even within the cities, we can do a lot. For example, use native vegetation for our gardens, and in general, creating parks and gardens are good for birds. That's the like main Oh, and maintaining our cats indoors, please. Yes. Cats are, very, are a big problem for birds. This is a big point. We all love our cats. They're wonderful, wonderful animals. But they're meant to be indoors, okay? Because when we let them outside, they're real. You, cats are really effective predators. And they can just, they, they hunt the birds, and then they don't do anything with them either. Um, but the, the other big point that I want to pull from Santiago's talk right there, which I loved so much, was really about being local, okay? L ways that we can protect our local bird populations is by buying local, buying from local places with sound economic and, you know, cultural practices that take care of the vir environment that they're around, you know, environmental stewardship, which we talked about before, maintaining our wetlands, maintaining our woods. And these are all ways that you can help by buying local, but also talking to, uh, you know, the leadership in your community and making sure that you let them know that it's important to you and to our bird friends. Santiago, that was an awesome episode. Thanks, I enjoyed it very much. That was so fun. Here's my bird. I made a loon. It's a rocking bird just like that. Would love to see yours as well. Uh, next week on the show, uh, Dr. Craig Chipola is joining us. He's an archaeologist and curator at the Royal Ontario Museum to talk all about what exactly archaeology is, which in many ways is the exact opposite of ornithology. Very not similar. So I like that we're going to go in a different direction. Let's do one final shout out to our friend. Bye there. Bye, everyone. Stay safe, everyone. Wear a mask. We love you. And see you next time on the Rom Kids Show, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Bye.